that was even before I knew that I was pregnant and I was just like, what is going on? Hello ladies, welcome back to my channel. Today is a video I am very excited about because it's basically just a video for the ladies. If you are a man watching this, I feel like you'll probably be watching this because maybe your wife is pregnant and I think that that's very sweet that you wanna watch this and see what her first trimester might look like. But I know that majority of you watching this will be ladies and I'm so excited for a good girl talk. In honor of it being a girl talk, I have decided to do my makeup while I talk to you guys. So it is just like two friends getting ready and me giving you all the goss about what the first trimester has been like. While I'm filming this video, I'm currently 19 weeks. So I am well and truly into my second trimester, but every single week I have kept a short, description of what my symptoms have been every single week of my pregnancy since the week that I found out and I found out at week four so that's pretty early so I can't wait to talk to you guys about it also I wanted to do my makeup because I wanted to show you before I did my makeup for the video that my first symptom that I got that indicated that I might be pregnant is I got acne you can see on my neck especially I've been getting acne and at the bottom of my face. I feel like the lower half of my face has been where I've gotten most of my acne. And then I also have some acne on my shoulders. But for the first time in my life, I don't feel insecure about my acne because every time I look in the mirror and I see acne, I'm like, yeah, that's a sign that I'm growing a human and that my body is doing an amazing thing. And I just think it's really cool how pregnancy makes you appreciate your body so much more. All right, so I'm just gonna start by prepping my skin with some moisturizer and some primer. And I will talk to you guys about week four, my first week of pregnancy and my earliest symptoms. Like I said, my very first symptom was acne. And then my second symptom was fatigue. I, <laughs> that wasn't a fart by the way, that was the primer coming out of the bottle. I immediately started feeling tired. Oh my goodness. And it's a tiredness that you can't describe to anyone. I have had glandular fever before when I was younger. I had glandular fever. Some of you may refer to it as mono. I had that for three years. So I know what chronic fatigue feels like. And this was right on par with that. I started going to bed at like eight and then waking up at eight. And then I would have like one or two naps in the day. And then by the time evening came around, I was shattered. It was so hard to be productive. I felt so unmotivated. It felt like everything that wasn't absolutely vital for me to get done during the day, it just got procrastinated and put on the back burner because I was so tired. And that was even before I knew that I was pregnant and I was just like, what is going on? I started talking to Josh about maybe I should see a doctor because I thought that maybe I actually did have chronic fatigue. Another symptom that I had was I had very sore breasts and I thought that maybe I was gonna get my period soon. I've always had irregular periods, so I've never really known when they're gonna come. So I just thought maybe that's why my breasts hurt, but it just kept getting sore and sore as time progressed and my period obviously never came. <laughs> I also felt quite bloated and I had this weird tightness in my uterus that I hadn't had ever before where I would just like stretch or if I stood up quickly it would just feel like my uterus was stretching from me standing up which was very interesting. Definitely a sensation I haven't had even when I've been on my period which is a pretty good intel because I feel like most of the symptoms that you get like pregnancy symptoms can also be period symptoms or P PMS symptoms. So you never really know in the beginning if you're pregnant or if your period's just about to come. So those unique symptoms are ones to look out for. For week five, I wrote here on my notes, mild uterus cramps and still tight when I stretch, fatigue, very tender breasts, mood swings, emotional, and starting to pee in the middle of the night. I do remember that weeks five and I think six as well, I was very emotional. I was crying a lot. I got offended by everything. I was very sensitive. 
I was not the funnest person for Josh to be around. Week six, I put very emotional and overwhelmed mood swings, fatigue, tender breasts, acne, waking up to pee once every night, nausea starting, so thirsty, waking up multiple times in the night for water, and sweating every night. Okay, so this was the week that my nausea started and also yeah again I was super emotional not the funnest person to be around I wasn't peeing more in the day but I was definitely peeing more at night time like getting up in the middle of the night needing to pee but I was also so thirsty and this is something that I still experience which is I will wake up in the middle of the night and my mouth is so dry that I feel like I can't even swallow. I'm just like, oh, I need water. So I've been keeping water next to my bed this whole pregnancy. And it's just crazy because I drink so much water during the day, more than I probably ever have my whole life. And yet I still wake up in the middle of the night feeling so dehydrated and thirsty. And then from drinking in the middle of the night makes me need to get up to pee. So it's kind of... You can see that cycle and week six is when that cycle really started. Also in regards to like sweating every single night, like I'd wake up in sweats. That is because your body temperature, like your base temperature, it raises when you're pregnant. And so I was just hot all of the time. <laughs> and I found that the time I got most hot was at night when I was trying to sleep, which is just super inconvenient because at this point I'm getting up because I'm thirsty. I'm getting up because I need to pee and I'm getting up because I am sweating in the middle of the night and I would be sleeping with the window open, the fan on, I wouldn't be under any blankets, I was sleeping without pajamas, I was so hot and then I would still wake up sweating and mind you this was in December so this is a very cold time of year in Canada, this is winter and then week seven hit and I put in all caps HORRIFIC NAUSEA Week 7 was my absolute worst week for nausea I was very fortunate because I was not throwing up but I was nauseous 24 7 like I would wake up in the morning before my eyes even opened I was like I feel so nauseous and I basically felt like as if I had COVID and my taste buds changed. Every single thing I was eating, it just tasted like, has this gone off? Is there something wrong with it? Like, did I cook this wrong? It just felt like everything tasted off and I did not have any cravings or anything like that. I basically just wanted to eat the most blandest food possible. I didn't want anything with flavors. I just wanted plain crackers. Um, like plain white bread maybe with a little bit of margarine on it I really was not getting many vegetables during this time or hardly any meat I would try to get some so that I was getting some protein because I knew that the baby needed it but oh my gosh it was so hard to eat and I was just living off of gravel just trying to suppress my nausea it was not a good time for week seven, I also wrote lack of appetite, exhausted, tender breasts, still sweating every night, <laughs> which are all not very fortunate symptoms. Um, I definitely did not have that pregnancy glow yet. I mean, I, I don't feel like I have a pregnancy glow, to be honest. Um, just like with my acne and stuff, I don't really feel like I have a pregnancy glow and then I have like the extra hair growth that comes with pregnancy and so sometimes I have very bad hair days but some people tell me that I do have the pregnancy glow and I don't just know if they're being nice um but I think it's just because I look happy because I am happy I think that's what people see when they tell me that I have the pregnancy glow and then week eight so week eight I got a very interesting symptom I actually was a little bit scared that I was having a miscarriage because I had very very bad lower back pain and that can be a sign of miscarriage um, I mostly found this painful lower back pain in like my bottom left 
back it was very very painful at times i felt like i could not walk straight and no stretches relieved it um i would try to massage it my husband would try to massage it but nothing was helping it just really hurt uh, so that started at week eight and i wrote moderate nausea so i guess my nausea started getting a little bit better um extreme fatigue lack of appetite tender breasts sweating every night and okay this is so random both of these are really random um struggling with smelly feet i <laughs> i kind of forgot about this so my feet stunk so bad and it wasn't just because my your nose gets more sensitive during pregnancy josh would also be like oh my gosh wash your feet and like multiple times during the day i would just excuse myself go to the bathroom and just like wash my feet and then like a few hours later i'd be able to smell my feet again which i have no clue why that was um i guess it's just like a weird hormonal thing our bodies do really weird things when we're pregnant so let me know if you had anything like that as well and then the second thing that's also really weird that happened in week eight was i started gagging when i brushed my teeth and i even gagged at the smell of my own pee <laughs> Like that happened twice. I, in that one week, I literally peed and I had to hold my breath to not smell it because I just started gagging. And then I laughed because I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that I'm gagging at my own pee. And I just basically had to like flush and get out of there as soon as I could because I felt like I was gonna throw up because of the smell of my pee. But even at the time with the nausea and the gagging, I was still able to see the humor in it and I knew that it would pass because everyone told me the second trimester for most women, not all women unfortunately, but for most women the second trimester is better. So even though it was a hard time, I was still positive. I knew it was going to get better and I knew that all of these symptoms were just signs that I was growing a human, which made me happy. All right, I'm not going to talk while I curl my lashes because it's really hard to take myself seriously when <laughs> I have this thing in my face. Side note, Josh and I went and watched the second Dune movie this afternoon and I thought it was really good. I want to know what you guys think. I had never watched anything with Tom Hot. not sorry, not Tom Holland. I had never watched anything with Timothy Chalamet in it before and I was very, very impressed with his acting. If you've watched that movie, let me know what you think. Week nine, I wrote acne, especially on neck, still present. Fatigue, less nausea. So my nausea started going away at week nine. Um, back pain disappearing. Slightly increased appetite. Waking up twice a night to pee now. Um, sweating every night, still, still struggling with smelly feet. So you can see a bit of improvement there with my appetite increasing, my nausea decreasing. Um, I did start peeing more by week nine and a lot of the other symptoms were still the same. All right, I have two lipsticks that I'm trying to decide between. This one, it's kind of like a nudie brownie, yeah. <laughs> Great description, Alicia. Or this one that's kind of like a pink. You can't really tell, but it's got a little bit of like a purple tinge to it as well. Hmm. I wish you guys could give me your opinion in real time. All right, you might hate me, but I think I'm feeling this vibe. This is the finished product. Okay, week 10. Started getting acne on my shoulders and upper back. Not sweating so much anymore, but still have a high body temperature, still exhausted to no end, eating less frequently, but still more than before pregnancy, waking up once a night to pee. Okay, so I went back to once a night to pee. Also the frequent eating frequently thing. So what I was referring to is I discovered that a really good way of dealing with nausea was just to eat all the time, like eat small amounts of food all throughout the day. And by all throughout the day, I mean literally all throughout the day, like 
every hour and a half I was basically eating something and if I waited even slightly too long like 15 minutes too long I would start to feel sick so I just kind of had to eat to beat the nausea eat it to beat it week 11 still lots of upper back slash shoulder acne waking up thirsty in the night still this has been the first week that I have noticed I am noticeably peeing more during the day. I'm still waking up at night to pee. I have been having some aches and pains in my joints, especially my hips when I lie down on my side. I am still tired all the time. You can kind of see what my consistent symptoms were, which was the acne and the fatigue. And later on I guess kind of the thirst like just feeling so thirsty all the time so yeah week 11 was when I first started feeling like when I lie down on my side at night to sleep it just feels like a stabbing pain in my hip and then I have to roll over to my other side and then I sleep for a bit and then I wake up and it just feels like a stabbing pain in that hip so then I have to roll over to my other side oh and that started at week 11 which I think is pretty early I think some women only feel that like later on their second trimester, but I was one of the lucky ones that got to experience that early. And then my final week of my first trimester, week 12, hips are hurting if I lie on my side for too long. Exactly what I just told you guys. Acne is getting worse on my shoulders. I feel more emotional and more connected to my baby. I am peeing more and more. I am starting to show a little bit. So when I say a little bit, <laughs> I was really showing a little bit. At the time I felt like my bump was really like starting to show and how could you miss it? But looking back, I'm like, that was the most subtle bump. Like <laughs> it literally just looks like I'm a little bit bloated or yeah, it, it was not obvious at all but because I knew my body I could tell that there was like a slight little bit of a difference I think also my pants maybe started feeling like a little bit tighter at that point I also remember I told myself that at 12 weeks I would be ready to tell the world like post it on Facebook post it on YouTube Instagram but when I got to 12 weeks I just didn't feel ready and that really surprised me because on this YouTube channel, I share so much of my life, my marriage, my faith, like everything that goes on. I love sharing it. But for some reason with this pregnancy, I just felt like this is mine. And I felt like I didn't want it to be known so broadly. And I was kind of stressing out, will I ever want to share it? Like, am I always going to feel this protective over it? But then it took a few weeks and by like week 14, I would say, I was like, oh, I'm so ready to share it. I'm ready to post it on YouTube, ready to put it on Facebook. I want everyone to know and I felt ready to share it. So if you're in that amount of time right now and you're just like, I just don't feel like sharing it. I don't know if I'm ever going to feel like sharing it. Just listen to your heart. Don't force yourself to share something that you're not ready to share yet. And... I'm sure that eventually you'll get to the point where you're like, I just want everyone to know. But if you don't get to that point, that's okay. There are no rules on who you have to tell and what time you have to tell them by. Also the part where I said that I started feeling more emotionally connected to my baby. I have been keeping this pregnancy journal. I might show it to you guys some other time, but it basically allows me to like write down milestones to put my ultrasounds in there to talk about when I felt the first kick and when I started showing a bump when I heard the heartbeat for the first time all those like really special milestones and there was one page where I got to write a letter to my baby and I was just overwhelmed with emotion and I felt so connected to my baby when I was writing that letter oh my gosh I'm so emotional. I just cry thinking about it. And that felt so good to get to the point where I felt like I was starting to get an emotional connection to this baby. It's not just like, oh my gosh, I'm pregnant. There's a baby in my tummy. It starts to feel like this is my baby that's growing in my tummy. And when that connection happened for me, it just felt so good. 
and I feel like that has just gotten stronger and stronger throughout this pregnancy, especially with like now. I don't want to spoil too much because I will be posting a second trimester recap, but I have been like feeling kicks and feeling flutters and movements and with every single movement it is like I just love this baby more and feel more connected to it and pregnancy is just such a beautiful thing I us women are so blessed that even though pregnancy is difficult and especially the first trimester is so difficult for a lot of women I know a lot of women have it way worse than me but we are so blessed as women that God has chosen us to be the carriers of life and that he's made our bodies in such a way that we can give all of the oxygen and nourishment to this baby and be their home for nine months and keep them safe and we don't even know what our bodies are doing our bodies just do it it's such a privilege such an honor so yeah let me know how far along you are in your pregnancy or what your first trimester was like or if you're trying to get pregnant i wish you all of the best and i just pray god's perfect timing for you and that this video helped you know what to expect i love you guys and i will see you in next week's video bye